As we both know, there are many informational videos on YouTube that'll teach you about the Zoom F6, its functions, and its 32-bit float recording feature. I mean, did you know that the Zoom F6 can record both in 24-bit and 32-bit simultaneously? But something I still have yet to find on YouTube is a video verbally and visually explaining the process of how to record external audio from the Zoom F6, and then being able to later synchronize that audio in your editing software. I'm sure you still have quite a few questions as to how creators record their audio, and then syncopate it in post-production, the editing process, but also understanding what you're doing and knowing why you're doing it. So why do I think this is so important? Well, for many of us creators, there are many things that we're going to be good at. Perhaps videography and editing is a big strength of yours, but audio... Hmm, not so much. Well, audio is an element of film production that I am extremely passionate about. And it happens to be one of my professions in the entertainment industry. So if interested in learning about more of my audio work and what I do as a filmmaker, then you can check out my website linked in the video description. So today, I am here to teach you and visually show you how I record audio from my Zoom F6 mixer. The process is actually quite simple, but it can go over a lot of people's heads. So let's break it down. So let's talk about your audio recording setup. Well, first, you're gonna need a way to power on your audio mixer. I use an Anchor external battery bank that is powered via USB-C to USB-C cable. There's a USB-C port on the Zoom F6 that allows me to connect the battery to the Zoom F6. And with my experience only having a shotgun microphone connected to the Zoom F6 and nothing else, the battery was able to last me for like four to five days. It was pretty remarkable. There's also the option of using an NPF battery, but you can find an NPF battery on Amazon very easily. And I'll have links down below in the description for you to check them out. Another thing you can do, which I strongly advise against is using six AA batteries to power on the mixer. Now I'll get back to why I advise against using a bunch of AA batteries to power on the mixer, but I wanna to touch on our last way to power on the mixer. This is a technique I use almost always when recording reaction videos on my music channel for YouTube. My laptop has a Thunderbolt slash USB-C port that allows me to connect my mixer to my laptop and there's no problems there. Hell, the Zoom F6 is so cool that it has a feature where you can use its SD card reader as a USB drive. It's pretty crazy and it saves you a lot of time in the end. The next thing we're gonna need to know, can you guys guess? We're gonna need to know how to record the audio. And luckily we are living in the golden age of digital entertainment. So go ahead and grab your trusty SD card from anywhere on Amazon or how you can find one on the street somewhere. And because audio doesn't take as much space to record, unlike 4K video and 6K video that take up like gigabytes of information, you only really need a 16 gigabyte SD card, 32 gigabyte, 64 gigabyte, or if you really want to go this route, a 128 gigabyte SD card. To learn more about SD cards and how they work, you can find a card up above my head that'll teach you and explain it in a much simpler way. So now let's go over the recording settings. There are various options to choose from, but as of right now, I'm recording in 32-bit float. But the Zoom F6 gives you the option to choose MP3, 16-bit, 24-bit, 32-bit, hell, even 24-bit and 32-bit at the same time, which is something I already mentioned in the beginning of this video. The file type that I suggest you select is stereo slash mono. And this is because you're only recording one microphone. I'll touch base on poly recordings in another video, but I just want you guys to know that mono, stereo, one to two channels. Poly meaning several channels. So it only makes logical sense that if you're recording with one microphone, you might as well just record in mono slash stereo. Now the next thing we're about to touch on is organization and organizing your audio is absolutely crucial. So what you'll wanna do is click on your menu button and from there click on new folder and then go to project name. You can use the right two buttons on your mixer to vertically navigate through the system and use your stop and play button to navigate horizontally. Now this will only work of course when you're naming your files. So now that you have your files organized, you have your recording format set, everything is all set to go. However, we still need to turn on an audio channel so we can record audio. So turn the channel one knob, which is the top left corner knob, and turn it all the way until the white line reaches the very top at the 12 o'clock position. Listen back to the audio using a quality set of studio monitoring headphones, and then raise or lower the gain levels as needed. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what I did before recording this video. So now that we've got the external audio recording set up, now let's talk about our video recording setup. Because in the end, remember, we're gonna be synchronizing our video mic 
along with our external audio. So we need both audio sources in order to properly syncopate them together in post-production. Now the camera I'm using is the Canon M50. Make sure of course that you have a nice lighting setup. I have my ring light right here. I have another LED light right here. And then I have my microphone right up above my head that you cannot see. And the microphone I'm currently using is the DDS Mic 2S. If interested in learning more about the microphone, you can click the card right up above my head and you can find a link to the camera and microphone in my video description. All right, so now we got our video and we've got our audio ready to go. We're ready to press record. So what you're gonna do is press the record button on your audio first because your audio doesn't take up as much space as your video. After you've done that, press record on the camera. Then either slate for the camera or visually slate for the camera. And this is what I mean by visually slating. Alrighty, this is step three, recording both audio sources simultaneously. Either make sure you clap or give yourself the information knowing where you are with your edit. The clap will help you indicate when the action is going to begin, instead of having to wait for another five minutes until something actually happens. And visually slating will help your editor in the long run with understanding the scene number, the take number, and where they are in the editing process. Because if they're just looking at a random video and audio clip, they're not gonna know exactly what's going on. They'll hear one thing, and then they'll hear another thing, and they'll try to tie them both together, but it'll just take longer because there's no visual or auditory reference to help them in making the process more smooth and efficient. For me as a solo creator, it helps significantly to tell myself on camera, okay, this is step one in the script, this is step two in the script, this is where we are at the script. So now that you've finished recording your YouTube video, you're ready to eject both SD cards from your devices and transfer the media onto your external hard drive or somewhere in your computer. So for me, I have an SD card reader on my computer that I usually put the audio SD card in first and then I put my video SD card into an SD card reader adapter. Now this is an adapter because it's a USB-C cable that plugs directly into my Thunderbolt port. And the reason I use this is because when I'm transferring my visual media, of course there's more information that goes into that. So it's going to be a little bit of a longer process than transferring the audio. So by using my Thunderbolt port, the process won't take as long. And if you're thinking about investing into one of these adapters, I'll have links in the video description. So before you transfer your media, make sure you organize and create specific files on your external hard drive or somewhere in your computer that'll indicate what the media source is that you're transferring. Because you really don't want to stack up a whole bunch of media sources into one folder that are both audio, video, maybe some pictures, and it's just going to get really confusing and unorganized. So be sure to do that before even thinking about transferring your media to that source. The next thing to do is either highlight all the audio files in that folder or simply click and drag the folder itself onto your external hard drive or wherever you plan to save the media. I used to save all my media onto my computer, which is a big mistake. I highly advise you not do that, but if you're just beginning content creation, go ahead and do it. But just know that in the future, you should definitely invest into an external hard drive because it'll give you much more space to work with. And you can find links to external hard drives that I use for YouTube in the video description as well. So now let's create a new project in Adobe Premiere Pro. So open up Adobe Premiere, create a project, open up the media browser, and look for the folder containing the media you want to import. And this is why it is so key to organize your audio and video files before even transferring the media. After all the media is imported and transferred into their proper bins, I usually like to drag my beginning clips onto the timeline. And what's great about Adobe Premiere is it'll automatically adjust your sequence settings according to the metadata of your video. So now that your video and your video's microphone track is on the timeline, it's now time to also place your external audio, your good recording, onto the timeline as well. So I usually place my external audio on audio track two, leaving the video audio track on track one. Now you can highlight both clips and have them all selected at once. Do this by left clicking on your mouse in the timeline and dragging your mouse over both tracks. Right click on the tracks and go to the option synchronize. From here, it'll ask you which tracks you'd like to synchronize. Usually I tell the program to synchronize to track one because what we want to do is synchronize our external audio on audio track two to the camera's microphone audio on track one. Now give the program a few seconds depending on how long your footage is or how much RAM and memory your computer is able to process. What's happening right now is that Adobe Premiere Pro is analyzing both audio tracks in their waveforms so that the waveforms can match together and you don't have to worry about synchronizing them manually. So in this video, we learned how to power the Zoom F6 using an external power bank. 
Plus, we also learned the batteries you can use to power on the Zoom F6 without the battery bank. We learned how to create a folder in the Zoom F6 mixer for organizing our audio files. We also learned how to turn the audio tracks on and how to adjust the audio levels based on our liking. We then shifted to transferring our media onto our external hard drive or our computer drive. We then learned how to import all the media into Adobe Premiere Pro and then automatically synchronizing the video audio and the external audio on your timeline. Now I hope this video helped you understand the process of recording and synchronizing external audio altogether. And if it did, I would greatly appreciate you hitting that like button. Now, since we're in the editing stage, which I know the majority of us dread, wouldn't you like to learn how to edit your videos faster while also making them look professional at the same time? Well, if you click or tap the video right next to me, I'll walk you through exactly how I do that. Thanks for watching my tutorial on how to record and synchronize audio using the Zoom F6. I look forward to seeing you again soon.